Now let's take a look at a TXV, TEV system that is undercharged with refrigerant. And the symptoms of this are going to be very similar to the cap tube system that we discussed earlier. So the evaporator temperature. So what do you think? Is it going to be high, low, or normal? So it's going to have a lower than normal evaporator temperature. And that's due to the lack of refrigerant. That causes low pressure. And because of the temperature pressure relationship, there is also going to be a lower temperature in the evaporator coil. That's uh, why in residential air conditioning, sometimes you see it fr the coil freezing when there's an undercharge. Superheat is going to be high, low, or normal. Now, we know that uh, TXVs maintain superheat over a wide range of conditions. However, in a refrigeration system, there's not a lot of refrigerant. So uh, many times, the a, uh, TXV is not going to keep the superheat at, at a normal level uh, because uh, very little refrigerant leaking out of that refrigeration system is going to uh, cause the TXV not to be able to regulate that. So you're going to have higher superheat because there's a limited number, limited amount of refrigerant in the system. So is the condensing temperature going to be high, low, low or normal? So look up there at the evaporator temperature. It's going to be lower, just like the evaporator temperature, um, for the same reason because of the low pressure and that uh, because there's not a lot of refrigerant and a limited amount of refrigerant, it doesn't absorb as much heat out of the box as it can. And when it doesn't absorb heat, then the, the temperature lowers. And is the subcooling going to be high, low, or normal? It's going to have low subcooling. Uh, and again, that is because there's a lack of refrigerant to subcool. So here is our walk in cooler with normal operating pressures and temperatures at this point. So we have a suction side temperature of 25 degrees, a box temperature down here of 50. So we have a TD of 5 degrees, which we which is normal. We have a condensing temperature of 125 and a So what happens when we have a system like this that is low on refrigerant? Well, the first thing that you're going to see is the suction pressure is going to decrease. We talked about that earlier because of lack of refrigerant. Suction pressure decreases, and what, ha and what happens is evaporation starts up here on the... Uh, beginning part of the evaporator coil and normally it's going to evaporate all the way down this coil until it hits a certain point right about here and then it's going to start to superheat that that vapor there's all the refrigerant has boiled off and now we are in the superheating mode down here but because of lack of refrigerant what happens is Evaporation begins here, and, it's, and it starts to pull the heat out of the box. But because of the lack of refrigerant, at this point, all of the refrigerant has boiled off. And, and this part of the coil essentially becomes uh, null and void. It's not doing any type of cooling. All it's doing is picking up superheat, superheat, superheat right here. And we end up with a very high superheat level at the uh, exit point of the evaporator coil. So here's where, that's why you get your su high superheat because we're not boiling off and changing the state of that refrigerant through the entire evaporator coil. It boils off and changes state way too early and then it just begins to pick up superheat which doesn't give us any type of cooling whatsoever. So on the evaporator side we have low evaporator temperature and uh, the because of the lack of refrigerant which lowers the pressures and just remember when there's that pressure temperature relationship so when the pressure goes lower so does the temperature then we're going to have high superheat because there's not enough refrigerant in the system the evaporator is starving and that starving evaporator causes higher superheat so what happens here on the condenser side so we have 
a lower pressure on the condensing side as well. So because there's not enough refrigerant, it pretty much blows through the condenser coil. Normally it would get backed up at this point and then it would begin subcooling, but because there's a lack of refrigerant, it really does it doesn't get backed up in and blows through the blows through the condensing coil into the receiver, out of the receiver and heading towards the TXV and you're going to see bubbles in the sight glass because it hasn't fully subcooled. It's still changing state from vapor to liquid. So you're going to see some of that vapor uh, show up as bubbles in the sight glass. It hits this TXV right here. It is not a solid column of subcooled uh, liquid refrigerant hitting that TXV with, and it is at lower pressure as well. Now remember we talked about the on the evaporator side that because it boiled off at this point in the evaporator it picks up a lot of superheat but it doesn't pick up a lot of heat from the, the air enough to raise the pressure so there's not a lot of heat in this refrigerant and that's the uh, latent heat that we're talking about so due to that fact there is not a lot of heat on the high side and again that's the reason that we have lower condensing temperatures and pressures than we would normally see. Now the one thing I want you to keep in mind as well is uh, a low charge does not mean that there's a leak in the system. If the system wasn't charged properly prior to your arrival or if it was charged uh, in the winter time and, and it's very difficult to do that you you have to pay attention to that as well so don't always go searching for a leak uh, the one key on the leak and, and suspecting a leak is if the ambient air temperatures and conditions have not changed and for the last year and a half this this walk-in cooler has been cooling properly and then all of a sudden you see these symptoms here of low system charge it's a pretty good indicator that there is a leak now if we have some ambient temperatures that change you want you go from summer and you hit some cold days and then you're having some issues with the uh, pressures and temperatures and you suspect a leak make sure that you check the fan cycling controls that they're set are set properly and then um, before you go chasing any type of leak in the system